right so here we are back in AutoCAD architecture and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to complete your detailed views all right now as you can see I would have already completed most of them and that's because I don't want this video to be very long so I'm going to show you how I do these two and that should I would hope <laughs> help you to complete all your other views all right now if you were here in the last episode when we did our sectional elevation views you would have seen how i actually got these uh, ring beam in as well as the lintel in by using the autocad built-in library of component details all right so this little tab up here if you click on it it has a number of things in in there depending on if you're using the standard or metric um, you can go ahead and select uh, the library that you want to use we're using the us library right now and all of the material and components available here will be in standard measurements all right so of course we can go and drill down into different types of components and we can choose different sizes or types based on what we are looking for we can even type in things that we may need let's say we want um hurricane anchors so we have hurricane straps if you want um let's say you want something else you can just search for it in here all right but you don't have to always come inside of here because we do have a tool palette that has some items inside of it so if you click on this little setting and you go down to detailing you would find that we have a lot of those same components um, located here for just quick access all right so we're going to be using this as well as that whenever we can't find what we need now obviously not everything is going to be inside of here <laughs> you know so there are times when you're going to have to literally draw your own detail and that's perfectly fine that's how i do a lot of my details currently just the same but i'm going to be using mainly what is in the library for this project so i hope that you enjoy it and you learn something and if you do hit the subscribe hit the like drop a comment ask the questions and share the video all right let's begin so we're going to start with the two by four that is located at the top of the window so let's click on wood and right away we get a wood looking uh, block there but that's not the right size it says two by four but that's not the cut i want i actually want a rough cut and i'm gonna change the size to two by four that is what i need and then i'm gonna change the rotation to 90 degrees and then i'm going to drop it right in the corner right there all right so that gives me my first detail component now guys it's important for you to know that these blue lines will not be printed this is just an outline or a shape out of the detail and autocad is saying to you now you need to fill in the areas that needs to be filled in all right just like these other detail that i did AutoCAD provides the outline and you fill in the gaps. Likewise, when I provided these details earlier, some episodes ago, um, we ha just had the outline and then we would use these components to fill in where we can fill in. And of course, I am, some of these I had to use lines to draw. Like these are just regular lines I used to draw them and kind of just create some details so it's a combination all right so you work it how you can the next thing i'm going to place on here would be the lintel as well as the beam i'm going to show you how i did it so go to concrete and go to beams we're already on beams i want it to be customizable and i'm going to make it six inches by one feet that's good i'm going to change turn off this chamfer chamfer thing no so it becomes rectangular and then do i want to see the reinforcement no because i want to make my own reinforcement so i'm going to place this right there and then while i'm in the command i'm going to just change the height to eight inches because the lintel will be eight inches deep and then i'm going to flip it on the x-axis so that it comes at the top and then i can drop it right on top of there good so now i have my two concrete areas there then I'm going to drop some blocks inside of here. So let's go to concrete um, to masonry. And we're going to change from clay to CMU. And of course, we're going to select the size block that we used for this project, which would have been 6 by 8 by 16. 
and that's what it looks like in a sectional view of course we can change the view from section to plan view if that's what we want um, you have elevation view and you have what else elevation pattern um, so you can fill an error we're not going to use that we're going to use uh, sectional and we're going to click our first point here and we're going to draw our line upwards now if you notice as you draw your line up it builds on top of each other more and more but we're going to just build it to what we need which would be just two rows of blocks and i need to center this in the middle here good so just like that we have our block work and our beams looking beautiful now i'm going to draw some lines here just to fill this area of the of the wall and the window all right so that's regular lines all right good and then i'm going to also draw a line here to represent my rendered area of the wall and then we can go ahead and place the steel work or the rebars inside so we're going to go to concrete once more and we're going to go over to the category change it from that to reinforcing steel now guys this is an area where you will need to know how they do beams and steel and whatever in your region i'm just doing it based on what i use in jamaica all right so for this uh, beam i'm going to be using four inch rebar not, not four inch rather number four rebar and you need to know your rebar sizes so make sure you check that out um and i'm gonna instead of using single rebar like what you're seeing there i'm gonna switch it to an assembly which would be a rectangular column which actually gives me the tie along with um you know some other rebars in there so i'm gonna just change some numbers in here to get the amount of rebars that i need now guys this is where you're gonna have to mess around and try to figure out how this thing works um, i need a edge offset of one inch make these one inches as well so essentially i'm using a number four rebar on the inside and a number three rebar on the outside to create the ties all right and if we can actually draw one of these and see what it looks like should look something like that so the tie it would be a number three and the one on the inside would be a number four so let's go ahead and draw our steel rebar inside there put one more in here looking good all right so that covers a multitude of sin all right let's go now we're going to be adding our fascia board um so let's go ahead and go to wood uh, we're going to be dropping a lot of lumber on this um, drawing so two by it's actually one by ten i think our fascia board is one by ten so we need to rotate it negative 30 degrees um and that's because i do know that the roof slope is 30 degrees so i have to bear that in mind i'm gonna drop that right there so that fills in that gap right there then i'm gonna place my rafter again go to wood rough cut and this rafter would have been two by six but this time i want it to be in the elevation view so i can literally draw let me turn off ortho mode i can draw the the rafter to how long i want it to be so something like that so that would be my rafter i'm gonna reshape it here beautiful then above the rafter i would have some form of sheathing um, in this case i'm going to be using plywood three quarters of an inch so let's go to wood and this time we're going to change the category to sheathing change it from gypsum to ply and change the size to three quarters of an inch and then we go ahead and draw our ply and that's what it looks like all right perfect i'm going to move this up like that all right so that's good and then on top of this we have our purlings or in jamaica what we call lath 
like what you're seeing over here. And I use for this two by three because the two by two is not available in AutoCAD. So I'm just using what is available in the software uh, for this demonstration. To go back to wood again, I'm gonna say rough cut two by three. I'm gonna rotate it minus 30 degrees. And I'm gonna move my base point to here. And I'm going to drop it right in the corner there. All right. So that would be my base, uh, my first purling or lat. Then I'm going to copy this up. I need my angles to work. All right. I'm going to copy this up every 10 inches. Uh, the spacing between these depend on the type of roof covering you're putting on. So bear that in mind. All right. So there we are 10 inches apart. And then we drop the roof covering on top of that. So let's go down to roofing and we're going to select shingles. And of course, AutoCAD don't have in all the different type of shingles, but we're going to just use a 16 inch wood shingle for this one. And I'm going to flip it on the, I think it's the Y axis. And then I'm going to draw my roof coming down. It, it always starts from left to right for some reason so bear in mind that you have to go this direction you can't go that direction all right so i'm going to kind of create a little trace line here and i'm going to start somewhere like up here drag it down and then i'm going to place it some like like right there all right so that would represent my roof covering looking perfectly beautiful oh this need to go Let's go ahead and place um, the wall plate on top of here. So that would be wood. And I need a rough cut and I need this to be a two by four. Again, rotate it 90 degrees. And I want the base point to be in the middle and I'm gonna drop it right in the middle of there. All right, now we usually use a anchoring bolt to hold down the, the wall plate into the wall so let's go ahead and see if we can find that detail here it is you can just type it in and it would populate for you so anchor hook bolt and i'm going to choose a three quarters of an inch version i'm going to hit insert and it gives you that bolt and now we need to place it wherever we want it all right so i'm going to be using a nine inch bolt in fact i might just raise this no let it be nine and then I'm going to drop this up to seven inches. I'll work with that. And then I'm going to start like in the center here, maybe like right here. Pull this up. You can see that you can actually move your bolt up and down depending on where you want it. So I'm going to place it like right here. And then I'm going to place my anchor wherever I want it. So place my anchor about here. So that would be my anchoring bolt and it looks good. I don't think I would have done a better job creating this detailed manually. Um, so that looks beautiful. The next thing I'm going to drop on here is a hurricane strap because this is very important where we live in the tropics here. So hurricane anchor and I'm going to use this one right here. There are you know, many different types you, you can choose from. Um, so I'm going to use this one. I'm going to change my base point to right here and I'm going to move it right there. All right. So the, ang um, the hurricane anchor is holding down the roof or the rafters to the wall plate. And then the wall plate is being held in place by the anchoring bolt. So that roof ain't going anywhere unless it's very old. Now I need one last piece of wood or piece of board kind of uh, covering this area. So I'm going to go to wood again, rough cut. This time I'm going to use a one by 12 and I'm going to place it along this wall right here. And I'm going to kind of move it up so that it um, covers that area. That looks pretty good to me. So the last thing I want to add is just um, something here to represent the ceiling. All right, so I'm going to go to wood again and I'm going to go to sheathing. I'm going to use plywood for this instance and I'm going to make it three eighths of an inch and I'm going to just draw it along here. And then we could put some um, 
ceiling joist in. I'm gonna actually use the um, let's use millwork that can gives me at least a one by two elevation. Sometimes you have to manipulate this thing to get what you want. So that's what exactly what I'm doing here to get my ceiling joist. All right, so that looks just about good. Now, if I should go ahead and turn off the blue layer, which of course we know is not gonna be printed, we're left with this. And so you can see that we have a pretty filled out, fleshed out detail. And the last thing we would need to do is to provide some cutting lines to cut off the wasted areas um, that we can actually get in our document palette underneath annotations. If you go down to the bottom here, we have cut line. And before you use it though, make sure that you're on the correct scale. So this drawing is a three quarter inch scale. I need to change my scale to three quarters of an inch. And then I can go ahead and use it. So the first one I'm gonna draw is from here, coming down like that. If you notice, it's it is stretching. All right, so I'm gonna stop it about here. And then I can pull this part backwards to cover up what I want to hide. There's a little piece of the roof peeping out. So I need to get rid of that. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing for this little piece here. So I'm going to start like right here, move it down. Probably need to start a little bit higher, All right, but that's okay. I'm going to move it up like that. And then I'm going to do one more here. Make it like about there. All right, that's looking beautiful. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn back that layer on. All right, so there we go. That's all we need for uh, our Eve detail. And of course, you'd go ahead and start to add your notes to it. In this instance, I'm gonna move on to the foundation footing. So let's start with the footing down here, which would be again, back into detailing, sorry. Then concrete. And from here, we're gonna go down to slab with optional haunch. And the good thing guys is once you get used to using the detail component, you kind of know where to find things and how to manipulate them to get what you want. So it might be a struggle at first. It might be overwhelming, but hope that you stick with it. All right, so this, won't, this will be a, a nine inch slab that I'm using here. I'm just using the slab because it gives me what I want. Um, I'm going to say, yes, I need a custom size. My slab thickness should be nine inches and I do not want that haunch thing. So I'm going to turn it off. And um, do I want to see reinforcement? Yes, I'm going to set my reinforcement to be number four bars as running with number four bars. And I want my offset to remain at one and a half inches. All right. Now, do I want um, rebar on both edges? No, I only want it at the bottom edge. So I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna draw something right here. It looks like that. So that's exactly what I want. Now I'm gonna do the same thing up here since I'm inside of this command. I'm gonna make it six inches though because my slab here is just six inches thick. And I'm gonna increase the amount of rebars in here. I'm gonna make it about six. Um, it's not going to be the perfect amount, but I just want to see something inside of it that I can um, annotate to. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw something from out here in like that. Looking good. So that would be the floor slab. And then, of course, we would go to masonry to get the blocks. And we're going to go down to CMU again and select the size block that we're using four by eight by 16. No, it's actually six by eight by 16. And again, we're going to start from the base and we're going to move our way up. And as you go up, you can see that the block is being created on top of each other. Click. And now I'm going to be moving all of these over. I should center it rather. Let's use the center command. Good, so it's centering the wall and then I'm going to use lines to draw my rendering. Oh my 
flashing or whatever you call it. All right, and that looks like that. And then I would now draw a line. In this case, I'm gonna be using a polyline as my rebar running down in the middle of this wall. And I'm gonna turn it in this direction to make a kind of a, a J. Then I'm gonna make the thickness of this line, edit polyline with half inch good so that would be my rebar running up into the blocks and basically that is it guys we can actually go ahead and add another layer here maybe another half inch to represent the finished material whatever it is maybe it's tile you can get as detailed as you want you if you want to put the the mortar and the grouting and whatnot on here you can go ahead and do that but I'm just going to put a line to represent the finished uh, material and then I'm going to be also putting the what we what we call the um, the backfill and the compacted hardcore so this would have been two feet six inches and then we're going to go across like that all right and then we can go ahead and provide some hatching in this area I'm going to use spy line to um, kind of help with that so I'm gonna hatch I'm gonna hatch this ear and this hatching should actually be gravel and I'm gonna make it 8.0 whatever that is and I'm gonna also hatch this area here with the earth material I'm gonna make it 15 and I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees then I'm gonna delete this line and I guess that line can remain then I'm gonna put it on the hatch layer I don't have a hatch layer as yet so I'm gonna copy one of these that I have in my uh, in my sectional elevation copy and I'm going to paste it now once I paste it in here it brings over the layer along with it so all I need to do is to click on these guys and change the layer to hatching so now they are on my hatching layer get rid of that and then I can go ahead and draw my cutting line like we did with the roof so let's go down back to documenting and go to cutting line and we're going to draw a cutting line right here all right looking good and I'm going to do one more up at the top here perfect look at that all right let's go ahead and turn off those layers and now we can see exactly what we drew what's left there and that's it guys that's it for that detailing there all right now let us say we wanted to add like for instance i have like this uh two inch pvc going through the block if you notice i have this uh thing here if i delete it the block is underneath it so i kind of use a masking tool to kind of mask it over there's actually something that we can use called AEC polyline um, here it is polygon rather all right so we can actually draw a shape make sure it is a closed shape though once it is closed that shape becomes a masking tool and you can actually see the style over here make sure that it is saying masking polygon so if you need to draw like something going through the wall or going through the floor or whatever the case may be this is an excellent uh, tool for you to use to do that all right so i'm going to go ahead and drop the annotations on this Alright guys, you know what's missing? Um, I think we're missing the roof gutter. So let's add that to it. So gutter. Um, roof gutter. And we can choose the size and type that we want. I'm going to choose the half round gutter. So I'm going to choose like probably like the 6x6 six six, um, insert. And I'm going to flip this on the Y axis. And I'm going to drop it right here. 
so that would be what the roof gotcha looks like um, from this view we can go ahead and label it All right, guys, so here we are back with the finished product. Um, I've went through and detailed everything that I could remember to detail. Um, of course, yours would vary depending on the design that you're doing. But um, yeah, so this is what it would look like. And I kind of did a little test run to see what it would look like if I should print it on a sheet. And so far, so good. So I'm going to be dropping these details on a PDF so you can download them for your reference check the link in the description and just uh yeah have fun take care man all right guys so that wraps it up for this video and we're winding down nicely so remember download the pdf and subscribe like comment share all of it. instagram twitter I don't know the thing set <laughs> and guess what we have one last episode left in this series and I'm going to put it right here. As soon as it becomes available, it's going to be right here. All right. So check the links in the description or just click the button right here. See me I say? Or if you want to watch the previous episode, click the button right as so. That one here, right as so. Okay. See you guys in the next video. Big up yourself. Respect. Boom, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs>